today we will discuss addition of vectors now addition of vectors is not that much simple are similar to scalar quantities scalar quantities are added just by the arithmetic way we can add 5 kg with 6 kg and your answer would be 11 kg no other answer is possible if you are adding these two scalar quantities now the answer would always be 11 kg but in case of vector quantities we cannot add these vector quantities just by the arithmetic way now what we will have to do we will have to take care of its directions for example if we have these two vector quantities let's suppose this is 5 newton and the other one is 6 newton now if we add these two vector quantities now your answer may be 11 newton but it can be 1 newton as well it means that your answer would be varying between the two ranges 1 newton to 11 newton your answer may be 1 newton 2 newton 3 newton 4 newton up to 11 newton it means that there is some factor which would determine its resultant now what is that factor that factor is actually its direction now do you know how will it be 11 newton and when the answer would be 1 newton if these two vector quantities are in the opposite direction of each other then your answer would be the minimum possible or we can say that if angle between the two vectors is 180 degree your answer would be minimum and if the angle between these two vectors is 0 degree then your answer would be maximum so it means that the resultant vector of these two forces depends upon the angle between these two or the direction between these two now we can see that if the angle is increased from 0 to 180 degree from 0 to 180 degree its resultant vector decreases now how should we know that what would be the resultant vector now to have the resultant vector we have two methods one is graphical method and the other one is analytical method today we will be discussing only addition of vectors by graphical method and this graphical method is head to tail addition of vectors by head to tail rule by head to tail rule now what is head to tail rule a vector has now let's suppose this is a vector this point the starting point is known as the tail of the vector and the arrowhead point shows the head of the vector now these two reference points would be taken care of in this head to tail rule let's suppose that we are asked to add 70 newton at 0 degree with x axis let's suppose that this is vector a there is another vector b which is say 100 newton at 60 degree with x axis let's suppose that another vector c is 80 newton at 90 degree with x axis 
Now we have these three vectors and we are supposed to calculate or to determine its resultant vector. What is the resultant vector? Resultant vector is the vector whose effect is the same as that of all these three vectors which are going to be added. Now to add these three vectors first of all we will have to draw its representative lines. Now to, to draw the representative lines we must have some suitable scale. Suitable scale. Now we will have to choose a scale which can be shown easily uh, this 70 Newton, 100 Newton and 80 Newton. For example, for this we can write 10 Newton is equal to 1 centimeter. It means that to draw a representative lines of 70 Newton, we will have to draw a line of 7 centimeter only. To draw the line of 100 Newton, we will draw only 10 centimeter and for C it would be 8 centimeter. Now to draw these lines, First of all, we had vector A. This is x-axis, this is y-axis and our representative line was, or our vector was at 0 degree with x-axis. It means that vector A is along x-axis and its length is only 7 centimeter. Now vector B this is x-axis this is y-axis and it was 100 Newton at 60 degree. So it would be 10 centimeter and the angle between x axis and the force is of 60 degree. This was your vector B. And the third vector was vector C which was 8 Newton, 80 Newton long y axis are 90 degree with x axis. Now this is your vector C and length of the line is only 8 centimeter. Only 8 centimeter. Now we have drawn these three representative lines of the three vectors A, B and C. Now your vector R or the resultant vector would be the sum of vector A, vector B plus vector C. Now to draw the vector A, this was your vector A. This is your x-axis, this is y-axis. Now the length of the line according to scale must be 7 centimeter. Now your vector B would be drawn at the head of the first vector. This was your first, first vector. Now this is representative line or uh, this is x-axis and vector B must be at the 60 degree and its length must be 10 centimeter. Now this is your vector B. This is this angle should be 60 degree. Now you will have to take all cases to draw the line according to the angle which is specified in the direction of the vector. Now the third vector would be drawn at the head of second vector. Now this is your x-axis. Now the third vector would be drawn 
of 8 Newton and the angle must be 90 degree and the length should be 8 centimeter. Now these are the representative lines of vector A, vector B and vector C. Now the resultant vector would be obtained by joining the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. The tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. Now this is your vector R which is the resultant vector. It means that instead of these three forces, 70 Newton along x axis, 100 Newton along at the angle of 60 degree and 80 Newton at 90 degree with x axis or along y axis, we can apply this force R which would be equal to the resultant or the effect of this vector r would be the same as that of all these three. We can replace these three vectors with this single vector r and this single vector is known as resultant vector. Now if this resultant vector, this is the resultant vector, then what would be its magnitude and direction? Its magnitude would be obtained by measuring the length of the line by measuring the length of the line. We have drawn it randomly. We didn't use any scale or meter rod to draw these uh, lengths according to some scale, but we have drawn it freely. Now this length, we suppose that the length of this R vector is, let's suppose it is, uh, 17 centimeter 17 centimeter now you will have to convert the 17 centimeter according to your scale what was your scale your scale was 1 centimeter is equal to 10 Newton now convert this 17 centimeter according to this scale and this would be 170 Newton but this is the magnitude only this is the magnitude there is no direction how we will how will we find its direction direction would be with this x axis and this would be uh, measured with the uh, with the help of protector and here once again we suppose that this angle is say somewhere at uh, 65 degree now your resultant vector would be 170 Newton at 65 degree. What does it mean? It means that to replace these three forces with only a single force which is 170 Newton and at the 65 degree that would have the same effect as all these three vectors which are going to be added. So this was head to tail rule. Now to sum up we will see that to add the vector quantities we will have to take care of some basic points first of all the vector quantities which are to be added must be the like vectors must be the like vectors. you saw that we have added 70 newton 100 newton 80 Newton all these are the forces all these are the forces we cannot add a force and velocity momentum and acceleration momentum will always be added with momentum force would be added with the force acceleration would be added with acceleration so far addition the first and the basic condition is that these vectors must be like vectors these vectors must be like vectors now how will we obtain its range range means that the maximum possible answer and minimum possible answer this would be obtained for only two say it would be by adding 2 f1 plus f2 would be 
maximum and it would be at when theta is 0 degree and this would be the resultant if f1 minus f2 it would give you the minimum possible and it would be when one angle is 180 degree between these two any answer is possible